Hi everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this motherboard from Gigabyte. This is the Gigabyte Z77X UD4H. Now this is a standard ATX sized motherboard. It features the uh, LGA 1155 socket and that is for Intel's second or third generation core processors. Second generation is Sandy Bridge, third generation is Ivy Bridge. If you go with an Ivy Bridge processor you get access to a few more features such as PCI Express Gen 3 support. Sandy Bridge uh, still works just fine for it, it's just uh, it will run on PCI Express Gen 2. You'll get a little bit less bandwidth from that. Also, this does support Intel k skew CPUs, so you can overclock if you go with a k skew processor, such as a 3570K or a 3770K. And then, of course, it has the Z77 chipset, uh, which is controlling uh, several things on the motherboard, but it also gives you some, some more advanced features, such as smart response technology. This is a UD series motherboard that stands for ultra durable, so it features the UD or ultra durable construction uh, for high temperature protection, humidity protection, electrostatic protection, and power failure protection. Also down here at the bottom we have uh, some logos that are indicating some important things. 3D power, all digital engine for power delivery of course. The, uh, Gigabyte's 3D BIOS which gives you an actual graphical representation of the motherboard so you can click around to your memory or your CPU to get into those settings. Uh, of course also features the advanced settings uh, that a lot of folks are maybe a little bit more accustomed to so you can go with either one. Uh, as mentioned, core processors, second or third generation uh, from Intel. Z77 chipset, PCI Express Gen 3 support if you go with an Ivy Bridge processor. You get Virtue MVP and that's a software solution that will allow you to virtualize your GPU. So basically if you go with the integrated GPU in your Intel Core processor uh, and you have a discrete GPU you can use Virtue MVP to kind of switch back and forth to take advantage of stuff like QuickSync which uh, the actual iGPU in the Intel Core processors is very good at for video encoding. Also Windows 8 ready. So by way of the updated UEFI uh, BIOS, uh, you can actually get really fast boot times uh, with Windows 8s, and uh, yeah. Next up we have, of course, NVIDIA SLI uh, support two-way, as well as uh, two-way Crossfire X support for this motherboard. Uh, there's more info on the Ultra Durable series, as well as the glass fabric PCB construction that will help with humidity protection. Around here on the back, we have some more details on uh, some of those features that I've already mentioned on the front, but we'll take a bit of a closer look. So for instance, I mentioned the all digital power that's actually providing digital power delivery to the CPU, the HD graphics inside the CPU, the memory, as well as the uh, power delivery for the uh, CPU and the iGPU. Uh, we also have a digital engine that provides faster response time. Uh, also load, load line calibration is supported if you want to enable that feature. Uh, you, they're using twice the copper in the PCB construction. That's part of the UD or ultra, ultra durable design. Uh, also some more information on, for instance, Intel Smart Response Technology. You can use an SSD to uh, provide caching for your mechanical hard drive to really speed up your performance there. Uh, there's a little quick uh, diagram of the 3D BIOS. Uh, some more information on all of the UD4 series protections right there so if you guys want to take a closer look also some features down here in the lower right for instance we have some USB ports that will be always on so even when the system is off you can still plug in devices to charge from them uh, you get actually a dual UEFI BIOS uh, so that gives you a backup in case of a power failure while you're doing a BIOS update or you can use it to configure for instance an overclock setting on one and a stock settings on the other uh, also your display outs listed there, I'll be taking a closer look at those on the motherboard itself. And then you have some detailed specs down here in the lower right for all the components on the board. I'll let you guys take a closer look at that if you want to, and I'm going to go ahead and move on with an unboxing. Inside the box we have, first off, some documentation of course, oh, with a little insert, an installation guide addendum, so just a bit correction. What are they correcting? If the plastic protective cover with the CPU socket of your motherboard is fastened on the middle load plate, please refer to the following steps. Ah, so just uh, some extra information on removing the uh, plastic cover for your processor. Also in here we have uh, important information that you should always keep on hand while you're doing your build. So for instance, a layout of the motherboard itself. We also have a block diagram that Gigabyte provides, which I always like taking a look at just to see what's connected where. Also the detailed specifications for all the components on the motherboard. You also have, of course, a driver and software disk. I recommend going to the Gigabyte website to download the newer versions of the drivers and software that's no doubt available by the time you purchase this motherboard. But you can use that to get yourself up and running. In particular, the uh, 
the actual LAN chip driver is a great thing to load off of the disk because you can't download the new versions until you actually connect to the internet. Of course, we also have a multilingual installation guidebook, so if English is not your first language, you can reference that. We have an input-output shield for the back of your case. Uh, it's black, and we have clearly uh, color-coded labels on all of the inputs and outputs, so you can tell what's what. Also, it has this squishy bit on the back, which provides a bit of electromagnetic shielding, as well as protecting your hands from those harsh metal prongs that can sometimes cut. We also have uh, four serial ATA cables. These are all serial, serial ATA revision 1, 2, or 3 compatible, so they will work with your high-end uh, SSDs on a SATA Rev3 bus. Uh, two of them are going to be straight plugs on both ends. Two of them have the uh, L-shaped plug that you can see right there, 90-degree bracket on the angle, and they all have the little clasps to hold them in place. You also get an SLI connector right there, so since this board does uh, feature SLI connectivity or SLI support, if you're going with two graphics cards, you can use that to connect them together. It's a flexible one, so it should uh, allow you to match it up with the spacing of the PCI Express slots on the motherboard. So let's uh, take a closer look at this motherboard. Uh, first off, I'm going to point out the fan headers located on the board. There's a total of five. All of them are four-pin PWM-capable fan headers. So first off, CPU fan header is right up here next to where the CPU would be. You also have one fan header here near the power button, one fan header down here next to the SATA ports, one fan header down here uh, on the bottom right of the PCI Express, and then one fan down here right below the PCI Express. So that gives you a total of four case fans you could connect directly to the board, plus a CPU fan. Again, all four of those being four pins, so very nice that Gigabyte went with that solution. Also, for the color scheme of the board, as you can probably tell, it is mostly black. It's got some uh, also blue highlights, but here's a look at the back. Um, this is pretty much a matte black finish as you can see, so very clean looking. Uh, also, as you can also see, Phillips head screws mounting on the various heat sinks on the board, so that should make it a bit easier to remove and reinstall those if you ever need to in the future. Uh, also, again, uh, just for color scheme wise, uh, we have some gray uh, highlighting on some of the heat sinks right there, like with the Gigabyte logo, little blue bar as well adds a little bit of color. Same uh, type of color scheme up here on the heat sinks for the uh, power delivery, and then also for the slots for the memory. Okay, let's uh, take a close look at the board. We're going to start down here in the bottom right. And uh, first off, you have your front panel connectors right there, that little color-coded block as well as a little chart below it uh, so you can tell what's what. You can also reference the manual if you're curious or want to double-check what is what. Uh, you also have a clear CMOS pinout right there, those two little pins, so you can use a jumper on that to clear your CMOS information and reset back to factory defaults. Also, a front, uh, I'm sorry, a LED debug panel right there. So that's a, another really nice item to have, especially if you're trying to get your system up and running for the first time. Uh, this is going to show you some postcodes and will help you much more accurately determine what the issue might be if one actually exists. I also wanted to point out, you got a BIOS switch right here, and I, I feel like Gigabyte has actually done a lot of work just with giving some actual clear indicators on the motherboard as to what is what. So BIOS switch right there, and you'll notice there's a little one on the bottom, a little two on the top, a little arrow up here that points out, okay, one is the main BIOS, two is a backup BIOS, physical switch allows you to easily jump back and forth between that, and I feel like they've done that at a few other places on the board just so you can more easily determine uh, what you're doing and what each switch does and that sort of thing. But moving on over to the left, uh, there's the system fan header I already pointed out to you guys. A couple USB 2.0, actually three USB 2.0 uh, connectors right there, so for front or rear panel USB 2.0 uh, brackets or front panel ports, each of these will support two USB 2.0 connections. Trusted platform module connector right there, the other system fan header that's on the bottom of the board, uh, SPDF pinout, as well as front panel audio connector that will be compatible with either AC97 or HD audio. You can route that over to the front panel connectors on your case, for uh, usually for mic and headphone jacks. On the left side here, you have some of the audio componentry on the board. Actually, right there, you can see your uh, audio chip for your audio codec. That's a Realtek uh, ALC892 codec, supports up to 7.1 channel audio. Uh, next up, we have our PCI Express connections. Well, PCI connections right here because you do have a legacy PCI slot right down there. That's uh, one of the fatter ones, older ones, if you uh, have an, a legacy PCI device you need to connect right there, you can do so. Also, one, two, three PCI Express X1 connections for add-on cards. And then uh, for your video card, you'll be installing that right here, if you choose to use a video card, of course, uh, because you can run this board without one, provided you get a CPU with an integrated GPU. Uh, but for your video card, you have a single full-length X16, also wired for X16 slot right there, so that's going to be your ideal connection point. You have a second full-length 
uh, physically X16 slot here. This one's wired up for X8, as you might be able to tell right there. Uh, and then for your two-way Crossfire X or SLI configurations, these are where you will install those uh, video cards. And uh, bear in mind, you do have triple slot spacing here, so you can go with a triple slot cooler card or you will have a bit of extra space here in between your cards for some additional cooling, or you, of course, have that uh, X1 PCI slot right there, so you could add on an additional card if you want to. You have one more full-length PCI Express uh, port down here. This one's wired up for X4. Uh, definitely don't plug in a video card right there, but you can do an add-on card, for instance, if you have a RAID controller or something along those lines. Uh, another point right here, there's your two BIOSes. As I already mentioned, you got the switch, which is down here. Uh, the two BIOS chips are actually soldered to the board, but you can jump back and forth between them. And there's actually a little LED indicator on either of these, so that will indicate which one is currently active. Moving on to the right, we have the Gigabyte logo right there and this heat sink. That's over the Z77 chipset, so keeping that one cooled off for you. And that's going to be uh, controlling a variety of things, but most notably are going to be your serial ATA connections, which are on the side of the board right here. So you can take a look at those. Uh, the two white ports here, actually I should say the six ports on the right are all natively controlled by your Z77 chipset. So these are gonna be uh, a bit faster, at least definitely the SATA Rev 3 ports right here are gonna be a bit faster. So two SATA Revision 3 ports, uh, six gigabit per second uh, theoretical throughput on those. And uh, that's again natively controlled. So these are gonna be fastest ports. If you're installing a boot drive SSD, for example, definitely plug it into this and make sure that your BIOS is set to uh, connect via AHCI or RAID mode for these connectors. Uh, these do support RAID configurations 0, 5, 1, and 10 via the Intel controller and the Z77 chipset. The four black ports here are SATA revision two, three gigabits per second, so I'd recommend plugging in uh, mechanical drives, for example, right there. If you want to set up a, a RAID configuration, that's a good option. And Gigabyte has also added on two more SATA revision three ports right here, and that's by way of an add-on uh, Marvell 88SE9172 chip. Uh, you actually have two here, and then there's another Marvell chip that's uh, going to be supporting a couple more eSATA ports on the back of the board. So there's your connectivity. Also, while I'm here, I should point out this side-facing serial ATA power connector. Uh, this is an optional power connector. If you are running uh, two-way Crossfire X or SLI via these uh, PCI Express ports, it's recommended that you connect uh, one of your serial ATA power connectors from your power supply to that to provide a bit of extra juice over that bus and make sure that your cards are going to be uh, used and able to use their full potential. Uh, next up here we have a USB 3.0 front panel connector, so located near where the front of the case would generally be in most case situations. Uh, so you can connect that for a couple USB 3.0 ports. Also of course the 24 pin main motherboard power connector right there. And then uh, moving up the side, we have a couple more high-end features uh, up here at the top. So there's the uh, other system fan header I already pointed out. Right along here, we have a bunch of voltage read points. Uh, now, these don't have pinouts on them, but uh, they are soldering points, so you can uh, connect a multimeter there and get some actual uh, low-level voltage readings, uh, especially if you're gonna be doing overclocking or system configuration type stuff. Uh, it's nice to have those higher-end features available on the board. Also, um, if uh, you do want to do outside-of-the-box test setup or something like that, you have a surface-mounted power button, surface-mounted reset switch, and a surface-mounted CMOS switch right there. So this is gonna clear your CMOS settings. So um, probably a little bit easier to, to get at that little button than the pinouts I showed you down there in the bottom, but you can use either one. Next up, we have our DDR3 slots. So we have four total slots. Each one can support a DIMM of a capacity up to eight gigabytes. So uh, four times eight gives you up to 32 gigabytes total potential capacity for your system memory. Uh, if you're running an Ivy Bridge processor, that will support some higher uh, DDR3 overclock speeds. So this one will at minimum, I'm sorry, not at minimum, but uh, the official uh, supported spec for DDR3 speeds is 1600. Uh, that's if you're using an Ivy Bridge processor. And this motherboard will support uh, DDR3, DDR3 speeds of 1066, 1333, 1600. Overclock speeds are also supported. That's going to uh, depend a lot on the uh, processor that you have installed as Ivy Bridge uh, based CPUs or third generation CPUs generally have a bit better IMCs or memory controllers that can support higher overclock speeds. Of course, your, mile, er, your mileage may vary on that, so bear that in mind. Uh, you do want to install your DDR3 DIMMs in sets of two using the color-coded slots right there because it does support dual channel that will give you some additional bandwidth. So buy uh, your memory in identical pairs and install in the color-coded uh, slots right here. 1.5 volt memory is recommended uh, and you should be set up and good to go. 
All right, next up we have the uh, actual CPU socket right there. So that's socket 1155, supports second or third generation Intel Core processors, Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge. Uh, simply remove the lever right there, move the plastic thing to pop in your CPU. If you're curious on that, you can check out our new egg TV how to build a computer video series where we have some more detailed information on that. Uh, we also have some heat sinks right around here and that is uh, basically providing cooling for your VRMs or your power delivery to the CPU uh, as well as the iGPU as well as the memory as shown on the box. Uh, so these nice beefy heat sinks are going to help keep those cool, especially if you're going for an overclock. Uh, generally speaking, keeping these components cooler will lead to more stability and also allow you to do uh, higher frequency overclocks if that's what you're going for. Also, uh, a 8-pin supplemental CPU power connector uh, up there at the top, so make sure you plug in your power from your motherboard to that, as well as the main 24-pin that I showed you on the other side. And now we will finish off with our inputs and outputs at the back. Continuing with the uh, bit of a theme for this motherboard, as in Gigabyte actually providing you some uh, really useful in indications. I don't know if you've ever had a motherboard like this where you have all USB 3.0. If you try to connect a uh, mouse or a keyboard right on initial boot, for example, sometimes you can have a difficulty getting it uh, recognized. So uh, the USB 3.0 ports, for example, these two here and these two here, are up controlled by a VIA chipset, VL800. Uh, but Gigabyte has put a little sticker here basically saying if you're connecting a mouse or a keyboard, uh, if you don't have a PS2 one and you have to connect USB, connect it to these. These are the natively controlled USB 3 ports via the Z77 chipset and there you will actually be able to use your mouse and keyboard uh, before you've installed your operating system, loaded your drivers and that sort of thing. So if you need to get into the UEFI, uh, definitely plug mouse and keyboard in right there. But that said, 246 total USB 3.0 ports available here on the back of the motherboard. Again, these are native. These four are controlled by the VIA chipset. You also get a combo PS2 port right there for a mouse or a keyboard. You have several display output options right here. So you got a VGA connector for an analog connection. You also have a DVI connect connection here. That's digital only, so uh, if you need an analog signal, definitely go for the VGA. This will not work with the DVI to VGA adapter. Uh, you also have an HDMI here, so that can support uh, video and audio outs. Uh, you can get 1920 by 1200 resolution from the DVI or the HDMI. You also have a display port connector here that's also going to do audio and video out if you're connecting it to a compatible display that supports audio, of course. And this one can actually do resolutions up to 2560 by 1600. You have an optical TOSLink connector right there. If you uh, have an, a, a high-end sound system, for example, you can use that to connect for digital audio. Uh, you also have uh, the aforementioned dual uh, eSATA connectors right there, so you can connect eSATA drives. Again, that's uh, SATA Revision 3 compatible with the eSATA. Those are supported by a Marvell add-on chip. And then finally, uh, you have your analog audio connection points right, th right there for your Realtek uh, audio codec. And then I can't forget, you also get gigabit Ethernet port right there, and that's also supported by a Realtek chip. And that is going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the Gigabyte Z77X UD4H motherboard featuring the Z77 chipset and the 1155 socket for Intel second or third generation core processors. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video, you can find more on our Newegg YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.